Hi, this is Steve. Welcome back to Scale Model Kit Review. I'm back with an open box review. This time it's the Atlantis Moon Eyes Dragster. This is kit number H1223. Now this is a re-release way back from a kit that was released from Ravel in 1963. Now in 1963 this was part of a double car kit by Ravel. And it was part number H1223. So I'll show you what the box looked like there. Now of course this was released under license uh, by Atlantis in 2022 this year. Now there have been a few build-ups online with this and I plan on building this too because what intrigues me the most about this is it's a really cool dragster from the 60s uh, and it has a lot of chrome parts and I'm sure it has a lot of extra parts that uh, a lot of us car modelers like to collect and have uh, in our in our extra spare parts bin because I'm sure we're not going to use all the parts that are included with this. Now the Moon Eyes Dragster uh, was born in a small shop in Carlsbad, California in 1961, which was the year I was born. And it was uh, created by a fellow by the name of Dean Moon. Now I'll put a link in the description below and a little history about this car, but it was actually a real car, a real dragster. So what, what's cool about Atlantis kits is, as you can see on the box here, they are made in the USA. So you can see here is the side panel there too. And what's cool about this too is they show us a built up version of the model on the back side here and all the pertinent de details about model kits. Now if I flip it over on this side, another view of the, the model kit and some of the features that are part of this kit here. So give me a moment and I'll open this up and I'll be right back. But first, uh, what kind of shocked me about this release, and I'm good with it because I'm always good about um, making things as compact as possible because of shelf space, being a collector as myself, uh, I'm running out of shelf space. But what surprised me was the size of the box. So you can see here that it's a lot smaller compared to a normal Ravel release of a car. So that's what surprised me about this release, being I heard it has a, a heck of a lot of parts inside of it, and they put it all inside of this little small box. So I'll open this up and we'll look at the parts. And as I open this up, you can see they give us a nice little flyer about Model Cars Magazine, uh, which I do subscribe to that. And uh, it's a very good magazine to receive in the mail each day. So there you go there. And first thing we see is the chrome tree and a bag full of white styrene, another bag full of white styrene, and another chrome tree. Now, if you'll note that the rubber tires were right up against the chrome tree there, so if you plan on storing yours, you might want to open it up and throw this uh, your rubber tires in a plastic bag or something to prevent them from. The heat and all that will affect the rubber tires if you have it in, in, you know, stored in an area, like down in the basement or garage, and if it gets hot down there, it definitely would affect the tires. And then you have the, the instructions here. And at the end of the video I'll, video, I'll put up the original kit instructions from Ravel. You can see those. But, yep, as we open this up, I am looking for the decals, which I don't see at all. They're probably bagged up somewhere, I hope. Okay, let's uh, move on to looking at the parts. Uh, check one more time that I did not receive the decals. That's the whole best part about it. Wait a minute. There they are. Maybe. Ah. Okay. And 
then get the kit instructions here. And on the bottom here are the decals. And we'll look at those a little closer. So I'll be right back. We'll look at the parts and the instructions and decals. Here's uh, the decals for this uh, kit by Atlantis. And uh, they do give us a brief history about the car here on the bottom. And as I open it up, they get right into the some building hints here and building the engine up the, with the parts tree. It looks like most of the parts are contained within that tree for this step here, which I like. That's pretty cool. And then we start on the uh, uh, engine. Uh, the front axle assembly down below we get into the new next few parts trees they have them highlighted where they are located on the tree i like that i like the way they did that and then the rear axle assembly itself um, same thing there and the frame assembly itself there too And lastly, the uh, axle and engine to frame assembly. So it looks pretty good there and how it's complete. The only thing they don't do, and of course they show decal placement here on this last one, but the only thing they don't do is they don't give you any color callouts for the colors of the parts here. So there's plenty of photographs on the internet where you can figure out what color needs to be what on this. So that, that makes it nice there that you can have that reference if possible. But like I said, there are no color callouts uh, in these instructions for that. Let's look at the parts. Go ahead and look at the tires first. And these are made of uh, rubber and very nice. Um, there's some little bit of flakiness from the chrome parts that are on these. So it wouldn't hurt to wash these a little bit. And... Uh, I do like it that there's no mold seam down the middle of the tire, like most of our car kits. Now, the small ones will have that. You can see there is a seam along the middle, but these other ones do not, so that, that makes it nice. There's no graphics or anything embedded on these, uh, obviously because of licensing with some of the stuff. Uh, the makers of the tires from back in the 60s, they would have to get special licensing, I believe, to put those on there. And you can see just the size of the decal sheet as it compares to uh, the tires. Let's get a close look. And just the famous Moon Eyes logos that are embedded on the car with the very nice yellow paint that they put on the car. Uh, but that's pretty much it. Nothing special there. And here's the first tree that uh, was out there on its own, the chrome plated tree here. And it's just like the trees that they used, they released back in the 60s. Uh, I'll show you pictures of that, They're kind of like parts pack trees. And yeah, look at this, you have a lot of options, a lot of wheel options here. And uh, looks fantastic. Uh, the chrome is very nice on this. And the attachment points are in areas that won't affect the chrome at all. So, you know, you don't even have to strip this off and try to redo it. But that's entirely up to you if you want to. But uh, very nice there. Let's get a close-up look. There you, there you go. These look like carburetors there on the end. And the knockoffs for the wheels. There's the wheels themselves. Look at the spokes for the front tires. Very nice there. And uh, you should get a very good view of these with my 4K video. So it makes it very nice. You can see the details of this kit. Very impressed with that. So just getting this kit for the spare parts alone is worth it. Turn it over. And... Back end of the spoked wheels look good. That looks good. Let's go to the next tree. And here's the next parts tree. Once again, chrome plated one. Um, you can see it's the, from the original uh, tool here. And very nice plating there. I don't see any uh, flash or anything. So this kit has definitely been worked on a bit but now I do see a little bit of flash over here on the end but uh, I mean it's nothing big uh, once again the parts are 
are positioned, I mean, they're attached to the tree where it's not going to affect the chrome that much. And you could use a Molotow pin to do some touch-ups if you need to. Um, but that's what that looks like there. Let's get a close-up view. And there you have it. I mean, the, the condition of these parts is, you know, fantastic, considered that the tooling was from back in 1963. So... You know, here's your, your gearbox that goes on the front of the engine. Oil pan there. Very nice there. Intake manifolds. Right? Uh, your valve covers. Very nice there. I mean, the blower parts. I mean, that is really cool. I mean, there's lots of extra parts here, it looks like. Another set of valve covers. So I'm very impressed with that. And here's the first bagged parts. And these are white styrene, obviously. This would be the frame of the dragster and some of the body panels. And it looks like the instrument panel himself. I'm super glad that these are molded in white and not in uh, yellow plastic. Um, but uh, very cool there. You know, not much detail on the instrument panel there at all. As a matter of fact, there's none <laughs> there. And then you have uh, more of the roll cage, the, the seat itself. I mean, uh, not much cleanup is going to be involved here. Very fine detail parts. Let's get a close-up look. And there you go with one of the body panels there. And nice detailing there with the louvers. And there's the frame. Part of the roll cage or body panels there. Turn it over. So all the all the uh, release marks are located on the inside of the panels. If you wanted to display the panels open in any way, you may have to sand those off. But no complaints there at all. Very nice. And we have the seat there. Gonna need to have a little bit of cleanup there on the inside of the seat. So some of the structure, the roll panels. So looks like the bottom panel. And as I remove the parts out of the next bag. The quality of the bag is a little bit different this time as compared to before. It's kind of kind of unusual. It's like uh, maybe they uh, just used whatever they had to, to, to wrap these up. That's okay. Um, at least they were bagged. So we'll look at the first one here and we can see we have a lot of uh, suspension components here. Uh, the, the axles and such. Uh, the brake drums, very detailed, very detailed from its day uh, back from 1963. So I'm very impressed with that. Let's get a close-up look. Here's the, the fuel can that goes on the front. The brake drums, steering wheels, shocks, parts of the transaxle, right? Gearbox itself, springs, front suspension. I mean, wow, very detailed, very fine pieces, very nice. Turn this over, and detail is great on the other side. All right, here's your front axle. I mean, wow, super detailed there. Nice. Gearbox again, steering wheel, the other side of the drum brakes, and nice. And here's the, the last sprue we're going to look at. And looks like they give us part of a, a tow bar for it. Um, more frame parts. Suspension parts. Looks like uh, the bottom of the car itself with wood grain there. 
and wood grain on both sides. That's impressive. Let's get a closer look. And you can see there, looks like a tow bar mechanism of some sort. More frame parts. More suspension components. And the wooden floor. You can see that it's got like a wood grain effect to it on that side. And if I flip it over, and we have the same thing wood grain effect on the floor. It's very cool. And there you have it. That was a very impressive kit. I uh, highly recommend this. As you can tell, it has a lot of extra parts built into it. It is in 1 25th scale, and I have to hand it to Atlantis Models for uh, reissuing this way back from 1963 and hadn't come out, come out ever before before then so that's quite a few years and uh, I'm very impressed with uh, the tooling they cleaned it up enough to where there's no excessive flash as a matter of fact I hardly saw any flash at all and the parts are, are very uh, detailed and it just makes for a very cool kit um, what I did notice too you'll notice there are no uh, clear parts with this issue because uh, obviously this car does not have any a windshield on it so don't expect to see that but plenty of chrome pieces and lots of tiny details so like I said if you haven't done so already um, pick yourself up one of these well that will be it if you like this video please give me a thumbs up and please subscribe to my channel Hit the bell for all video upload notifications. Happy modeling, everybody, and take care.